If you have pain, numbness, and a pins and needle type of feeling in your first four fingers and it wakes you up in the middle of the night, there's a good chance that somebody told you that you have carpal tunnel syndrome. What is up everyone? It's Dr. Everyday Jan, PM&R physician. Today, we're gonna be talking about everything you need to know about carpal tunnel syndrome. carpal tunnel syndrome in the first place. The wrist has an area that's called the carpal tunnel and through this tunnel there's a nerve called the median nerve and other tendons of the hand that go through this tunnel. And sometimes that nerve can get compressed and when that happens, you have these symptoms. The median nerve provides sensation into the first three digits and half of the ring finger. And so if there's compression of that nerve, you might feel a burning pain or a shooting pain and also that numbness, tingling, pins and needles type of feeling. Sometimes that pain can also radiate up into the elbow. Now because the median nerve also provides some strength into the hand muscles, if the compression is more severe and has been going on for a long time, then you might have weakness in your hands and difficulties grasping small objects. Usually it's going to affect your dominant hand first because that's the hand that you're using the most often, but it can happen in both hands. Another thing that you might notice is that your symptoms may be worse at nighttime. And the reason that happens is because when you're sleeping, your hand tends to be in different positions like bent like this, or maybe extended like this, and those positions cause more compression onto the median nerve. So you might find yourself waking up in the middle of the night and going like this to relieve your pain and your symptoms, and we call that the flick sign. Now anyone can get carpal tunnel syndrome, but it tends to occur with increasing age. Females are more predisposed to getting carpal tunnel. Also, if you're pregnant, you have increased fluid retention in your body, so that also increases your risk for carpal tunnel. Certain metabolic disorders like hypothyroidism or diabetes can also predispose you to carpal tunnel syndrome. If you have any fractures or trauma to the wrist or even masses in the wrist, then that can also cause carpal tunnel syndrome. There are also certain jobs like construction if you're using like a jackhammer a lot, as well as food processing and manufacturing that can also predispose you to carpal tunnel syndrome. Now there hasn't actually been a clear association with keyboard use, but there has been some correlation with excessive mouse use. Now how do you know if it's carpal tunnel syndrome that's causing your symptoms. In addition to the pain, the numbness and tingling, and possibly even the weakness, there are some tests that you can do at home, which are the tests that your doctor would do if you went in to see them. First, it's called the Phelan's test. So you're going to put your two hands together like you're praying and make sure your wrist is at 90 degrees and you're gonna hold that for 60 seconds. If that reproduces your numbness and tingling and pain, then that indicates that it's probably carpal tunnel syndrome. The second test is called reverse phalanx and it's just the opposite. So you're going to do a prayer position, but reverse and your wrist should be at 90 degrees and hold that for 60 seconds. And if that reproduces your symptoms, that's also indicative of carpal tunnel syndrome. Another test is called Tunnels and you're going to tap over the area of the carpal tunnel Tunnel, and if that reproduces the symptoms, then that could be from carpal tunnel syndrome. And lastly is carpal compression test. And you're going to just apply pressure over the carpal tunnel and press onto that carpal tunnel area. And it's a positive test if it reproduces the symptoms in your hand. Now these tests are not 100% sensitive, but they can help with the diagnosis. In order to actually get an actual diagnosis, we do a study called EMG and NCS, which stands for electromyography and nerve conduction studies. Now there's two parts, and the first part is the nerve conduction study, and that's where we're going to essentially shock the nerve, provide electrical shocks, and measure how fast the nerve is traveling. Sometimes an EMG portion is needed and a needle is placed into the hand. Now this isn't the most comfortable study and trust me, I know. When I was learning how to do these tests in residency, we had to practice on each other, so I know it's not comfortable. So usually we recommend patients to try conservative treatments first, which I'll discuss a little bit later. And if they fail that, then we do this test. This test is really helpful for number one, determining the severity of the carpal tunnel syndrome, whether it's mild, moderate, or severe. And number two, it also helps rule out other causes that might be causing your symptoms. For example, you might have a pinched nerve in your neck or a pinched nerve in your elbow that may be causing your symptoms and might not be from carpal tunnel syndrome. Usually the specialties that do these tests are either PM&R or neurology. In terms of severity for carpal tunnel syndrome, there's three different grades. There's mild, 
moderate, and severe. If it's mild or moderate, then it's still reversible. And so you really want to focus on doing the conservative treatments and also avoiding things that are actually making your carpal tunnel syndrome worse. If it's severe, then there is a chance that it might be irreversible. And that's when a consult to see an orthopedic hand surgeon would be the most helpful. Another way that's used to diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome is also using an ultrasound. So your doctor would use an ultrasound and see what the cross-sectional area of the median nerve is. And that can also help diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, in terms of treatment, the first thing to try is using Using a wrist brace at night. Remember how I said a lot of times symptoms are worse at night because your hand is kind of doing funky things and probably you're sleeping like this or like this. So the wrist brace helps keep your wrist in a neutral position. So that way your hand is not bending and compressing the median nerve. You can buy these over the counter or on Amazon. I'll link some down below. You're gonna want to try wearing this brace every single night for at least six weeks. You don't have to wear it during the daytime, but if your symptoms aren't getting better with just wearing it at night, then you can. Now during the daytime, make sure you're taking frequent breaks from your job, if that's what's causing your pain to be worse. Rest your hand and also do some stretches, which I'll discuss shortly. You're also going to want to decrease the inflammation in the carpal tunnel. So you can use an ice pack and leave it on for 15 minutes to just help reduce that inflammation and swelling that's going on and compressing the median nerve. You can also use oral anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, Advil and naproxen and sometimes people even get prescribed oral steroids. Now there's been some studies regarding whether or not vitamin B6 can be helpful in carpal tunnel syndrome and the results have been pretty inconsistent. There have been some studies that show that it does help but those studies were very small. Regardless I do know a few doctors who still recommend it for their patients with carpal tunnel syndrome. However vitamin B6 is found in a lot of the foods that we eat like fish, chicken, potatoes, vegetables. So it's not that common for people to have a vitamin B6 deficiency. And it's also been shown that if vitamin B6 is taken chronically, it can potentially worsen the neuropathy. Another treatment option is doing a steroid injection. So basically a needle is placed directly to where the carpal tunnel is. Steroid helps reduce inflammation and swelling. And so that helps with your symptoms. If you're working at the computer a lot and doing a lot of typing and using your mouse, you can try doing some ergonomic modification that would put less stress onto your carpal tunnel. You can try a curved keyboard or a special mouse. Now let's go over some exercises that you can try at home to help with your symptoms. The first one is called wrist extension. So you're gonna bring your hand up like you're stopping a stop sign and use your other hand to pull your fingers towards your body. And you should feel a stretch on the inside of your forearm here. Hold this for 15 seconds and repeat it five times. And try to do this four times a day. The second one is called a wrist flexion and it's just the opposite. So instead, you're gonna bring your hand down and use your other hand to bring your fingers towards your body. And you should feel a nice stretch up in here. Now, after doing these exercises, you might feel like your nerve might be a little bit aggravated. So put an ice pack on your wrist for about 15 minutes to help reduce the inflammation. The last resort treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome is surgery that's called a carpal tunnel release. Essentially, what your surgeon would do is that they would cut the ligament that's the roof of the carpal tunnel and that helps take the pressure off of the nerve and allows the nerve to heal. Surgery is reserved for if you have severe carpal tunnel syndrome, which can be seen on an EMG, or if you have persistent pain and symptoms and it's not improving with conservative treatments like the bracing and the therapy exercises. And you don't have to stay in the hospital overnight, it's done in an outpatient setting. An incision is done at the base of the palm and the procedure is pretty quick. In terms of recovery, it might take several months, maybe even up to a year to regain that strength and there is a chance that you may not regain all of your strength if it is very severe and has been going on for a long time. Other complications may include infection, stiffness, ongoing pain after surgery, and there's still a chance that your symptoms might recur even after surgery. Now, when should you see a medical professional if you're having these symptoms? Number one, if you try to wrist brace for several weeks and it's not improving, then it's a good idea to get it checked out. Also, if you have severe pain or weakness, then you should get checked out by a medical professional because there are other things such as a pinched nerve in your neck or issues with your shoulder or elbow that can mimic carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms. All right, I hope that video was helpful let me know in the comments down below if this is something that you're dealing with. Also, let me know if there's any topics that you want me to cover and I'll do my best to cover it. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.